Hey, what's up guys? This is Astronox Seaside Bellona. In this video, we have three other heroes that are free to play friendly, but Seaside Bellona, she is a limited uh, ranger. She is actually amazing for this because she has four debuffs. Her kit is loaded, she deals a ton of damage. Her skill two deals damage when she reaches five focus. It's uh, an AoE attack, defense break on skill two, unhealable and unable to be buffed debuff on skill three which are only going to help for increasing the amount of debuffs on the boss. Skill 1 with the target debuff is great to increase the damage output of your team against the boss. So just to show you guys, this team is actually uh, easier to gear for because, I mean, Seaside Bellona increases the chances of, like, of having more debuffs uh, being applied on the boss, which is really great. In the front line, we have Crozette. He has attack break on skill 1. You could build up his effectiveness. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you might, you, you should go for survival initially. So now we have two debuffs on the boss. We have four debuffs now, so that's great. And poison from Alexa, <clears throat> poison is 5% of the target's health in damage every time it ticks. And that is a ton of damage. So when she applies both of the poison effects, that is 20% of health in damage, 5% times four. We got Tarnor Guard is great, great, great. Oh my god, the damage on this turn is insane. Uh, is insane. Tarnor Guard has defense break on skill one. You want to turn off his skills so he keeps applying defense break as much as possible. Uh, his skill three will be useless because the boss actually has uh, immunity to decrease combat readiness. Uh, if you haven't seen it, actually, I will uh, do another run. Perfect. I got this material again. So on this run, uh, Alexa and Seaside Bellona are uh, very close to each other in terms of damage. So let me uh, do another run just so you can see. But Alexa usually is uh, the number one damage dealer. Uh, not by four, like it depends. Some runs like she, she, uh, she deals way more damage than Seaside Bellona. Some other runs uh, it's closer. But most of the time Alexa will be doing more damage. So I will be showing my stats and my gear at the end of the video. So I'm doing this video because, of course, uh, a lot of players do have Seaside Bellona. It would be unfortunate if, like, you couldn't use her in here. But that's not the case. You can definitely bring her along. The thing is, you want three debuffs on the Wyvern uh, as often as possible. Why three? Well, when you have three, the damage that the Wyvern deals is greatly reduced. So right here, Fireball Barrage, the last, uh, second to last line. When the caster has two or fewer debuffs, damage dealt is greatly increased. So less than three, he will do great damage. That's why you want three. Attack the front uh, hero first. The thing is, you want to bring ice heroes in here. I'm going to do a quick guide for you guys. You want to bring ice because ice deals 30% more damage. And also, non-ice will take 30% more damage. And uh, when non-ice heroes are going, they will give combat trinesse to the boss, the wyvern, which is terrible during the barrier phase because he slows himself down during barrier. And if you give him combat trinesse, he will just end that barrier phase real quick. Another... Uh, yeah, those materials again for reforging, man, I, I love those. I love those and I'm sure you guys love them as well. So, uh, yeah, so in terms of uh, the reason you need debuffs is you want to greatly reduce the amount of damage that the Wyvern does. So three debuffs or more will uh, allow you to uh, do that. And the boss, the Wyvern, will attack a random party member if you don't have at least two debuffs. It seems to be bugged because when I'm reading it, when I'm reading uh, the, abil uh, the ability, it says that you need, it's, it's basically worded the same way as the uh, greater uh, damage increase. It says like if you have two debuffs uh, or less, uh, the boss will decide to attack a random party member. So if the wording is wrong, then that's good for us. But if it's, uh, if it's an issue with the game, uh, then the boss will get harder. Because if you don't have three debuffs, the boss will also decide to attack a random ally in the group. Beside on turn one, on turn one, he will go first. The boss 
has something like 250 speed, by the way, guys. It, it's like, it's, there's no point to go first because, yeah, you will, yeah, you want to go after the boss, especially with your defense breakers. This thing, super acceleration, increase attack after attacking. The effect can be stacked when the caster is inflicted with two or fewer debuffs while below max health attacks a random enemy with fireball barrage. It says inflicted with two or fewer debuffs. So what's up with that? It, it looks like you only need two debuffs uh, and the, the boss will attack the frontliner. So it, it's an issue with the wording or it's a bug. Hopefully it's an issue with the wording or the boss will be uh, harder to deal with. But this team can definitely do it just fine. Sword of Azira artifact is on Crozette, upping his survival by a ton, reducing the damage of uh, elite and boss monsters by 30%. So it's a knight artifact. You can get it from the Hall of Trials shop and you can limit break it five times and have this thing uh, reduce the damage considerably on uh, your knight. In my case, it's Crozet. He's a free-to-play uh, hero. You can get him from the connection. Once again, very close to each other. I don't know uh, the run just before. I didn't even pay attention how the damage was, but I'm just going to keep on going in here. <clears throat> uh, the stats and gear will be after the battling, but I want to go through the, the fight mechanics, right? Um, so yeah, having ice heroes is a, like a major deal because it will be much easier to gear your team. Uh, you don't need healing. If your gear level, your offensive power is high. Uh, and also you want to tweak your speed. So of course your defense breaker goes first. And then your damage dealers. In my case, Tarnar Guard goes first. And then it's the rest of my damage dealers. Uh, I don't really care about uh, Crozet. But let's say you wanted to gear him well. right? First you aim for survival. So you want like with triple health sets. Uh, with uh, all the right gear, right side gear maxed, uh, you need something like 50% 50, 50 health in substats total from the, uh, the items on the left side, right? And that is item level 75. That's like the free health uh, set that they gave us uh, very recently for the rebirth event. So it's not too much. He will get... 30,000 health, he will have maybe 1,300 defense. It really depends on your substats though. Maybe my defense rolled a bit higher, but the thing is I swapped one piece to have a defense percentage on the right side. Uh, so he's running two health percentage pieces on the right side plus one uh, defense percentage. And they're all, they are all health sets. <clears throat> So you can make it happen with just an item with no healing <clears throat> if your uh, survival stats are high enough. But the Sword of Azira is a, a, a big deal. It's a big deal, so I would uh, recommend that you go get it uh, and limit break it over time because it's very helpful here and I'm sure it will be helpful in the future in other uh, PV content as well. Alexa, you want to have her skills going because she has uh, the poison on skill number two <clears throat> and this will help you to actually uh, have three debuffs or more on the boss or at least two right now because at least you won't have one of your party member getting uh, you know killed by the uh, fireball barrage even though like Seaside Bellona can survive it because she has the 30% damage redirect to the frontliner but like Alexa and Tarnar Guard will not survive <clears throat> unless of course they have like uh, I mean, they will need something like over 10,000 health, I believe, because their defense is pretty low, especially Alexa. So Alexa's skills are turned on. Seaside Bellona's skills are tur turned on. And uh, Crozet and Tarnar Guard, you turn them off because Crozet, you just want him to use skill 1. Skill 3 lowers combat readiness, which uh, won't work against the boss. And skill 1 has attack break. So Crozet, you up his survival. If you feel confident with his survival, you can increase his effectiveness. You need 65% effectiveness in this boss battle to actually counter the 80% effect resistance that the boss has. 15% you cannot counter because that's the innate, uh, you know, resist. That's just the way it works. <clears throat> so like you, like I've shown here, decrease combat readiness. The boss is immune to that. He's immune to decrease speed. 
and restrict. So if you want to bring Ceres in here, uh, the restrict will not work. If you have a hero that has decreased uh, speed uh, debuff, it will not work. Uh, it won't be applied to the boss, so that means you, that's not going to be a, a debuff you can count on to uh, actually uh, work toward that three debuffs, at least two debuffs, right? The three debuffs is to uh, considerably lower the damage output of the Wyvern. The thing is, if you have a tag break on top of those three debuffs, the boss's damage will be very, very low, which is even safer uh, with a Knight without healing. Or if you're going to be running the team that I was running in the, the free-to-play video the, with guide and tips i mean that that's pretty much this video as well uh, i'm gonna label this as a guide with uh, tips but i'm just clarifying some stuff for some players uh i've been told i talk too fast but i kind of have to like get it going right because uh i mean it's a lot of information so i'm sorry about that guys you can just rewatch, i guess uh you know if, if you're getting a headache by uh how fast i speak just take a break come back to it uh so the amount of debuffs part of this team is Amazing. It's definitely amazing. It's it's very reliable. Uh, you're seeing it in action. Poison damage right there. Uh, dealing a ton of damage. Man, I love these materials. I'm, I just keep getting them. It's great. It's great. Sometimes I run like this thing 20 times and I get like no materials. I don't know what's happening, but I love it. Once again, Seaside Balloon is very close to Alexa. And uh, that's, that's definitely great. Uh, this is going to be the last one, actually. We might end up failing this one. So... Yeah, Tarnar Guard, 75% chance to defense break for one turn on skill one. Uh, that is very, 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 very powerful. But the thing is, I'm using uh, the, uh, wow, Junkyard Dog artifact on him, which has a chance to apply burn for two turns. So that's an extra debuff coming out of him, right? Uh, so it, it's actually quite helpful. It's quite helpful. And I would say that you should put your best daydream joker on alexa first and then oh my god these uh these ads are doing a lot of damage i would say put it on alexa first and then seaside Bellona. but if you have let's say better gear on seaside she's fast as well uh, especially if you're running her on speed boots her crit damage is higher her speed is higher than alexa then since your skills are turned on and alexa is not just using skill one which attacks another time then maybe put your best Daydream Joker on Seaside Bellona. And then second best, Alexa and Tarnar Guard. Well, you could have Daydream Joker on him. Or you could have uh, Junkyard Dog to have some burn. Uh, like a burn for uh, two turns. Like there. It just applied. So uh, that definitely helps a ton. What else could I say about this team? Uh, the defense break plus the target debuff uh, increases your damage output against the boss by a, a ridiculous amount. Right here, we don't have three debuffs. So if uh, it's wrong and you actually need three debuffs in the future, then, you know, like it's going to be harder. So the thing is, heroes that uh, are not free to play heroes, right? Most of them have some pretty uh, amazing kits, like the amount of damage they can deal, but like on top of the damage they have some debuffs that last for a long time uh so they actually help a ton like a, a cigarette a dizzy of course she's limited uh these heroes will make this thing so much easier like a chloe crazy heroes that oh my god so alexa just ripped there she just ripped and uh, see if we don't okay we got the defense break i think we should be fine okay we got a dual attack here so it should work out Oh my god, that was so close. So close. But this could have been uh, a rip right there. Alexa took a lot of damage from the add. And then, like, since we don't have any source of healing, right? Because there's no healer here, then uh, that, that's what happens. That's what happens. The, uh, the, the, tail, the tail whip took us out. Took us out. Seaside, of course, beats and materials again. That's funny. Okay, so let me go, just go uh, and show you the stats right on my team and then okay might as well grab our nope never mind <laughs> never mind so cross that right you can reach th what okay thirty thousand health on him very easily uh mine is uh he was twenty seven thousand because of the memory imprint of seaside Bellona from an unknown slate i've used before but let's say when i was running him with triple health main stat uh you know health sets he 
only needed like this is 22 plus 27. Okay, okay, never mind. That that's uh, that's 59 already. Yeah, that that's uh, 77. 77 health on the left side. So I guess it, it's not that easy to obtain, but uh, I mean you will get pretty close to 30,000 health. And the Sword of Azira is all, almost giving a thousand health as well, but like he, it's maxed, right? I, I planned for this, so th that's why. So you could increase his effectiveness for the attack break, especially if you have skill ups onto him, but he's not top priority. I would say the other heroes are top priority, and Molagoras, they are hard to come by as well. So yeah, but uh, I wouldn't really worry about this because it gets dispelled, the, uh, you know, the uh, defense buff. And the barrier gets eaten. The barrier works, but the defense buff will go away. Unless you have like 200% effect resistance on him, which is not going to work out if you're trying to get as much survival uh, as possible. Let, let's try to like balance your health and defense on him to increase his effective health. That means go with uh, one defense percentage on the right side and two health percentage, but three health percentage main stat on the right side will uh, work out just fine. It's just like it might be easier to gear for if you have defense percentage one of them uh, maybe even two it really depends on your substats on the left side uh, in term of defense if you're missing a lot of defense by like by all means go with a one defense percentage is going to help a lot to increase his uh, damage mitigation in turn increasing his uh, effective health uh, let's just uh, sort this thing by ice so seaside Bellona, right she has some speed boots which is not really uh, the type of main stat boots that you want on Seaside Bellona, you usually go with attack percentage for PvP especially, so her skill 2 deals as much damage as possible, but she's geared for PvE with a ton of effectiveness, you only need 65%, but my gear has just a bunch of effectiveness all around, so it still uh, will work out fine for me in PvP. So the crit chance, you can actually go with 85% crit chance as ice because you have 15% crit chance since you are at elemental advantage. You got to keep that in mind. If you're building a team, a PvE team, you're not worried about PvP, then 85% crit chance on ice heroes versus fire or any element. When you are at elemental advantage, there's 15% crit chance for free. So my skill ups are maxed out. So of course, maybe your seaside Bellona is not maxed out. But I think if you have her, you probably started investing some Molagora because she is definitely broken. Uh, well, Rowana came out. So that's, that, that's unfortunate for seaside Bellona. But yeah. Daydream Joker, uh, of course, like you might not have a max Daydream Joker. So I'm going to be uh, showcasing other teams as well with some sustain. So, uh, you know, check those out if you don't have this gear level. Now, Alexa, Daydream Joker plus 30. This attacks twice if you land a critical hit on the first attack. The two poison effects for two turns, 100% chance, but of course you have to go through the resistance check and there's always that 15% innate resist that is there to troll us basically. Uh, but if you turn off her skills, you don't have to worry about skill two and three, but this is gonna be for uh, Wyvern, uh, to be honest, 11, 12, like 13, you, you kinda need as many debuffs as possible, right? So that's her gear, that's her stats. Like I said, like very, very squishy. If you get uh herself or tarnar guard attack like by the triple uh, fire barrage attacks if you don't have two debuffs on the wyvern you will lose these heroes and if it's at the start of the battle uh, it, it's just not gonna work out it's gonna be a failed run but at least you don't you don't waste energy which is great with uh, this game you just waste a bit of time so that's alexa now uh tarnar guard 196 speed close to 200 um I mean, his skill 1 is completely beast on top of skill 2. The dual attack chance increased by 10%. And the combat readiness of all allies increased by 25% whenever he triggers a dual attack is a big deal. It's a big deal. And if you can put him on speed and unity set or even, I mean, I doubt triple unity set, you will be able to achieve this amount of speed unless you put your best gear there and it's going to take a while to actually get those stats. But I recommend speed unity for him in late game. You can do a speed crit before that. Speed hit as well because of course landing debuffs is a big deal. Or just speed and broken set. So of course uh, I have high crit chance and crit critical hit damage across all my heroes. But uh, Tarnar Guard, you don't have to, do to go too crazy 
uh, with the, the offensive stats on him, it's going to be about the effectiveness. To be honest, I, I still need 10% effectiveness to reach that 65% to actually uh, have a better chance to land my debuffs. So this artifact is limited. Uh, you can just use, uh, you know, Daydream Joker if you don't have it, but it will increase your success rate with uh, Junkyard Dog. So whenever uh, the Guilty Gear collaboration event uh, happens again, I would recommend that you get this thing and try to limit break it, right? If you're gonna be running with uh, Tarnar Guard. Uh, next in line is, uh, well, Crozet, I did already show him. Now let's finish this uh, video with uh, just talking about heroes real quick, right? Uh, which I have done in the other guide, but I'm gonna go through this faster. So your top contenders for Wyvern 13, right? Wyvern in general. Sigrid is god tier in here because the amount of debuffs that she has, uh, the more damage she will do by penetrating defense, right? She will penetrate defense, uh, more defense. But the thing is, this 100% chance to apply on healable and bleeding for two turns. That's already two debuffs right there. And then if the target's health is at 50% or lower, it will 100% activate uh, skill one, uh, Sever, with 100% chance to apply those bleed. Of course, there's the resist check. There's an uh, exclusive equipment that boosts this thing to uh, the target has 75% health or lower. Or uh, the one I prefer, I'm gonna do a video with Cigarette uh, later right uh on my account number three on the europe server this is my account number one uh yeah i mean sever has an exclusive equipment that boosts the chance by 20 percent so with skill ups you can get 70 percent chance to inflict uh, a bleed uh, well two bleed uh for two turns it's a, there's a resist check for each of them but still that is insane insane the amount of debuff that she can land is is very very high uh and yeah she will penetrate defense which is great another uh, top tier hero is of course chloe with the exclusive equipment she can uh, apply defense break and magic nail i mean last three turns and uh cooldown of three turn is beast and this effect cannot be resisted which is beautiful it's beautiful it's gonna be on the boss it's great it's uh, it's guaranteed and the defense break to top it off with the crazy damage multiplier on his on her skill number three. So Chloe will definitely be top tier. Dizzy, of course, she has debuffs, right? She's got decreased speed, which will not work, but you have decreased attack and decreased hit chance. The problem is decreased hit chance doesn't work. It gets applied, but the boss will not miss its attack. Bosses in, uh, in the hunts cannot miss their attacks, but it will count toward debuffs. Uh, the debuff count. So attack break, decrease hit chance, and then she's got the extension of debuffs by one turn, which is going to be huge. The more debuffs you apply, the better this thing will be. The combat readiness reduction will not uh, work out, but you can wear a Syra Ren artifact on her to increase the chance of having more debuffs, or you could just wear um, this, uh, what's called? Let me just go in the artifacts real quick. So for Mage, Ethica Scepter. You know, having a chance to lower your skill cooldown is going to be huge, especially when skill 2 and 3 are on cooldown. But to be honest, like, uh, Syra Ren is pretty useful. I mean, decrease attack, decrease hit chance, and poison out of the 5 silence and sleep the boss is immune to. But yeah, Dizzy will not be built for damage. Uh, she, I would say build her for, like, speed and build her with a... Uh, yeah, 65% effectiveness. So that's how I would build her. Uh, if you can get some attack on her, I mean, you could get some damage out of her, but she's ne definitely not uh, the type of hero you want to go too crazy with the damage since uh, skill number three always misses. So yeah, just some quick heroes that are very strong. Uh, other things, uh, Sez can apply on healable with uh, his skill one and his skill two. Um, Crow could tank. I prefer Crozet to be honest with the attack break on skill once. Uh, Dian can heal, apply the barrier, but it will be taken off. Uh, it will be consumed or it will be like, uh, you know, dispelled. Ceres, yeah, I don't recommend her there. Luluka can work real well. I will showcase her in a team with uh, Cigarette on my account number three. Got defense buff, 
uh, got uh, defense break on skill 3 and 1. Defense buff can be used, but you need 200% effect resistance on your frontliner for that to work. And I'll showcase that. Seaside Bellona is godly, of course. Uh, in the 4 star, you got K uh, Karen with uh, defense break and 2 crazy damage on skill 3 with the extra turn. And uh, Clarissa can definitely be a solid choice. If you have these heroes already built, then there you go. The two bleeds for two turns, plus defense break that was added on her skill three, plus defense break for two turns on skill one. I mean, having defense break for two turns is actually very powerful. So Clarissa can definitely be a viable contender. Uh, Crozet frontline, of course. Uh, Angelica frontline heal or in the back, but I would say since you need so many debuffs, I would stick her in the frontline with a profit candlestick. Uh, and she will do pretty good. If you have the right survival stats, she can do it, and I will showcase that. Furious is really powerful. Uh, you can use the uh, the artifact, 5-star five artifact to apply target debuff. Um, the, what is it called? Star. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys. But he has decreased defense, 100% chance. There's the 15% innate resist, so it's, it's not on skill 1, so... It's not as powerful as Tarnar Guard, I would say. You can fully use the crit chance buff, especially the faster he is. Uh, for the rest of your team, if you want to go with 35% uh, crit chance plus the buff, bringing you to 85% crit chance on Ice Heroes, which is going to work out fine. He's got potential burn for two turns. So debuffs out of him, it's great. Uh, who else can I talk about? Uh, you can use Basque instead of uh, Crozet, but his uh, defense and health is lower, though. He's got the attack break on skill 1 as well. Skill 3-star uh, hero, so you can actually skill him up using, uh, you know, uh, Rare Catalyst, Stigma, and Gold. So that's actually uh, something that is pretty nice if you don't want to invest the, you know, the Molai Goro into Crozet. But if you need that extra bit of survival, I recommend Crozet uh, for you. And, well, Basque, you might have the memory imprint, which is what exactly? That's the thing. Crozet has health percentage memory imprint, uh, defense, sorry, percentage memory imprint, self memory imprint. So, uh, another reason why Crozet is better. Uh, Enot could be used. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's got increased attack, increased crit chance, so he, you could gear him with 35% crit chance. He's got the uh, decreased defense and unhealable for two turn and that has a 75 percent chance so that's pretty solid it's just that it's a four turn cooldown right but yeah actually like with the bleeding and decreased defense and unable to be buff debuff you could definitely be viable um but the problem is you can't really rely on his defense break the cooldown is too long but he could be your second defense breaker i would say um yeah maybe you can do uh you know, Alexa, Tarnar Guard, Crozet in the front, and then you could have Enot. Uh, that could definitely work. That could definitely work. Um, of course, Alexa, Tarnar Guard, they're beast. Angelique Momorancy is free. You can definitely use her uh, in the front line. I will showcase that. Uh, you need good survival for her. You can use a Prophetic Candlestick or Rod of Amaryllis. Uh, Rod of Amaryllis on herself or uh, Angelica instead of Prophetic Candlestick. And uh, yeah, she uh, she's definitely amazing you can get her for free that's another reason why she's amazing misty chain uh i mean it's about she can heal with this and this and she's got on heal bone decrease attack for two turns three turn cooldown 100 percent chance on this uh very powerful hero uh but it's hard to have a good reason to build her if you're just gonna be building her for uh wyvern and not pvp or, or other content of the game then it's a hard decision for some players but I did showcase her in my free-to-play team, and I recommend that you go check it out if you still haven't to see her in action, right? So she, she, she's going to provide some healing uh, to your Crozet or your Frontliner, which is uh, another plus. So I think it covers uh, the heroes. I guess you could use Aether as the healer to your Frontliner, but then you're going to have less debuffs being applied unless you can have maybe a Tarnar Guard with uh, maybe like... Seaside Bellona have uh, Dizzy, uh, like someone, Cigarette, like if you have Cigarette, debuffs are kind of covered just with Cigarette. So that's very, very powerful by itself. The artifact I was talking about, about uh, applying the, uh, where is it? Song of Stars, right? This thing has a 100% chance to make the enemy uh, become targeted for two turns. 
after a single attack. So you need to be doing a single attack to trigger this thing. But as it's a 100% chance. Unfortunately, it's a 5-star artifact. But still, the chance will be pretty good with just once at 75% chance. And 2-turn is very powerful, of course. So... Yeah, there you go, guys. That's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Astronox. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Press the bell icon for like to be notified whenever I release a new video. And check out my other videos. They should be showing up on the screen now. I got playlists of all sorts for PV and PV, uh, PvP content. Arena Guild Wars, guys, tips and outtos, and the best for 62 plus, as well as best other guides for my early to mid game players. Join my Discord server. We have over a thousand members now, guys. If you want to get help or help the community, feel free to join us. And that's really it for this one. I'm Astronox. Stay safe out there. COVID-19 is no joke. Stay home as much as possible. Good luck with all you do. Peace out for now. And check out my other videos showcasing, uh, you know, uh, different group compositions. If you might have uh, these heroes, well, that's good. You don't have to build like uh, some like free-to-play three-star heroes that you don't feel too good about building. But anyways, peace out for now.